Welcome back friends. In this video lecture, we'll be talking about sexually transmitted diseases. And this group of disease is known as STDs. Okay? So this is not one single disease. There are multiple diseases associated by different bacterial infections, parasitic infection as well as the viral infections. So we'll see all those different infections and infective agents and we'll also conclude about why this disease happen, how to figure out and identify the disease and what are the treatments and prevention cures for the disease. So let me take a color first. Here you see a statistical diagram of rate of the STD in UK between 2003 and 2012. So see, between 2003 and 2012, in these 10 years of window, you will find the, the cases of STD rising. And it's rising since then, even. It's kind of a linear if you check it. So it's kind of increasing. And, and this STDs are much more predominant in male earlier. But now, male and female both have a kind of parallel line of this STD infections. And number of cases, you see, it's kind of over 2 lakh per year. First sort of STD, so there are different infections, different diseases in build uh, or involved with STD. First, uh, we are going to talk about syphilis. Syphilis is an infection caused by Tryponema pallidum, okay, which spread both horizontal and vertical. Horizontal spreading means it can spread from, uh, this, let's say, the person's vertical transfer means from parent to the son or daughter okay horizontal means it can transfer from one person to the next person who are not related with any sort of like blood links okay so entry the entry in the body through minute minute absorption on the skin or mucous membranes okay and mucous membranes are the prime regions through which all the STDs are caused because you know STD or sexually transmitted disease the name suggests a lot of important features of the disease it is transmitted via sex or during sex or related with sex related active activities so in that case you know vaginal layer they filled with this mucus so mucus layers are the region where syphilis starts and obligate this this triponema pallidum is an obligate parasite with no animal or environmental reservoir. This only human being who gets this Triponema pallidum from one person to the other. So there are different stages of syphilis. In the primary stage, the infection only begins in the genitals. While in the secondary phase, you will see different types of symptoms throughout the body, like this sort of uh, dots or like, like the patches that are growing throughout the body. Flu-like illness itching thing throughout the body. They start like uh, mucocutaneous rash and also multiple in lymph spread to the liver, muscles and skin. Skin is properly visible from outside but this might spread to liver and lymph glands and in muscle. It also have a latent stage of 3 to 50 years. It may last inside a person and in this latent stages uh, though they are present, but this latent infection agents or infective uh, persons, they become carriers. So, once they have sex with other healthy human being, they have a chance of developing the infection. Though in latent patients, there are no symptoms, but it is hidden. And it's a silent precaution that you should take to use condoms while sex. Tertiary stage. Tertiary stage comes only occurs in 30% on the patients, where they cause like neurosyphilis when the syphilis is going to degrade and damage your nerve cells okay and cardiovascular syphilis which is related with the problem with your heart and the blood circulation system of your body normally the secondary type is restricted to the lymph nodes liver and muscle and skin which is mostly seen in most of the people but tertiary stage is rare there is also congenital congenital is the early stage during the pregnancy which results in the newborn so newborn as they come out through that uh, vaginal area uh, so if the mother carries these infective agents that might be provided to the newborn infant 
and the newborn is going to get those infection. Now the treatment for the syphilis, the treatment with single dose of penicillin only in the primary or secondary stage. But if it goes to the tertiary stage, it needs four antibiotics, type four or type three or the different types of antibiotics. And there are some drug resistance uh, pattern, though it's rare, but resistance has been seen for the macrolides type of antibiotics. But penicillin works fine in syphilis. So what are the laboratory diagnosis? Laboratory diagnosis, normally Triponema pallidum can't be cultured using microbiological culture media. It can't be grown there. So the only way to see them is under the microscope. We have a microscope feature called dark microscopy because it uh, dark, it, this microscopy gives you the idea of an organism in the dark background. So use that. And UV after staining with fluorescent level antibodies. So we put some antibodies inside the Triponema pallidum. And then what we do, we, we add some UV radiation there. So that those antibody which are labeled with fluorescent tag is going to give us some coloration. In this case, the coloration is green. Okay. By this fashion, we can identify our suspect. Now, syphilis kind of seem like spirochetes. Spirochetes like the spiral thing like, like this. So, like see the springs, like springs, spirochete. And they are 0 0.18 nanometer diameter approximately and the length is 6 to 20 nanometer. We can also do certain types of blood test like the Triponema pallidum particle agglutination assay, PAA. Triponema pallidum hemagglutination assay. HA, Triponema pallidum latex agglutination turbidometric assay, latex agglutination turbidometric assay or LATA, enzyme immunoassay which is uh, involved with ELISA, we can do radial immunoassay or RIA for the detection. We can go for chemiluminescent immunoassay, CLIA for detection of syphilis. Microscopy can give you a bit idea, like, like a basic idea about the infective agent because you can see this and this is the structure of this uh, organism is kind of uh, completely different with bacteria and stuff. So you can easily identify this infective agent. Now let us talk about the second type of agent that causes STDs and this disease is known as gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is caused by bacteria Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram negative cocci. Cocci means it is a round shaped bacteria but gram negative in nature. Mostly cocci are gram positive, staphylococci, streptococci, those things are gram positive. But gram negative cocci are dangerous because they cause infections and those infections are related with STDs always in this case. Okay. So here Neisseria gonorrhea spread through horizontal and vertical transfer as we all know. It does not survive well outside the body and there is a higher chance of a woman becoming in infected from a man. Woman infective chance is 50 percent um, uh, like it is a higher chance that woman be pe becoming infected from a man. So man is infecting woman and the situation well woman is infecting man. The chance when a woman get the disease from man is more, it's 50 percent. The chance that man gets the disease from woman is only 20 percent. The site of entry is vaginal mucus and there are mucosa associated tissues where they infect. Urethral mucus of the penis, okay, mucus of the throat, mucus of the rectum. So you see all these regions people use during different act of sex. So that is why they are related with sexually transmitted diseases. The clinical feature of gonorrhea is that normally they take 2 to 7 days of incubation for their growth and development and a visible infection and symptoms. Men can have discharge and dysuria. Their kind of genital discharge start to come out, some thick yellowish discharge. 10% can be asymptomatic 
and if left untreated it can cause epididymitis and prostatitis or urethral stricture okay so these are the different because the problem will be with the epididymis of the male structure with the prostate so infection in prostate infection of epididymis and infection of urethra in female or uh, men women can have vaginal discharge it is urea so discharge are thicker yellowish to brownish discharge 50% will have mild or no symptoms in women while males are much more symptomatic for this disease women are less symptomatic they might not have any disease visible or visible symptoms but there could be kind of some sort of 50% will have mild symptoms don't know but mostly who have this symptomatic like complications 10 to 20% of this can cause pelvic inflammatory disease or chronic pelvic pain and infertility so these are the bigger concerns associated with the gonorrhea disease vertical transmission can result in ophthalmia neonatorum so ophthalmia neonatorum is a situation when the mother transferred this neisseria gonorrhoe during the time of birth to the child right and they in that case cause some kind of ophthalmic disorder well while the child has some problem of opening the eyes and seeing stuff at the very early stage of their birth okay it is characterized by the sticky discharge from eye as i told you the treatment of gonorrhea is with cefexime which is the third and second generation cephalosporin second generation cephalosporin is cefexime cefriaxone third generation cephalosporins are also used like cefotaxime resistance is one of uh, which is increasing day by day which is widespread resistance against penicillin g tetracycline and spectionomycin normally you see the tetracycline and penicillin g work good at the earlier times but now they are not that much relevant because of some sort of antibiotic resistance the laboratory diagnosis of the gonorrhea involving in the microscopic analysis you will see the gonorrhea it can be found the neisseria gonorrhoe can be found in the in 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 this close proximity if you look at the blood smear you will see these are the gonorrhoe because they are cocci and they is generally present in two cocci at a time so they are kind of diplococci in nature two cocci attached one after another okay and you see the neutrophils are much bigger and they might sometimes enter inside the neutrophils to check so they are gram negative diplococci as i told you so if you grow them in the selected agar with some sort of anti fungal agent you can grow them at 37 degree celsius temperature with 5 to 10% co2 level for 40 to 48 hours so it might take 2 to 3 days for their development okay but you you need to have an anti oxy environment that is you should have a carbon dioxide there and no such oxygen anti biogram carried out on the positive culture in that case what you do the result reported to gonococcal resistance to antimicrobial program okay this is also known as grasp result reported to gonococcal resistance to antimicrobial program so susceptibility or antibiotic susceptibility test may also be done to check what a uh, kind of antibiotic should be given to properly treat gonorrhea that is the idea now the third kind of disease related to std chlamydia chlamydia is caused by chlamydia trachomatis and chlamydia trachomatis have different types of chlamydia trachomatis are present like they are divided into different serotypes there are multiple serotypes like a b c d and up to k and l okay so a to c serotype cause serious eye infections d to k cause genital infections and associated with ocular and respiratory infection and the l1 to l3 causes other types of lymphogranuloma infections okay chlamydia trachomatis is an intracellular parasite again it is another types of parasite it is intracellular which has two form elementary body and reticulate body 
Elementary body is known as EB, reticulate body is known as RB. Here in the picture you see the all of the sexually transmitted diseases have increased over the time and chlamydia infections are very common. It's more common in female than male. This is an interesting thought in this case. Okay. So if you see here, the clinical features of chlamydia is that bacteria bind to the specific receptor and enter via parasite induced endocytosis. That means in this case, chlamydia wants itself to be inserted inside those phagocytic cells. They want that. So this is parasite induced endocytosis. Within 9 to 10 hours, these elementary bodies, which are very smaller particles, differentiated into reticulate bodies. And once the reticulate bodies are developed, now it is free to grow, go and grow and move from different regions and then thrive in the body. Now in men, the symptoms appear from usually 7 to 28, uh, 21 days after infection, okay, which include white or clouded discharge from the genitals, non-gonococcal urethritis, epididymitis, which in includes like induced Ritter syndrome. In women, it is asymptomatic. As you see, the almost of all these sexually transmitted diseases are 50% to 70% times are asymptomatic in women. So it's very hard to guess and look at the woman and tell whether they have STD or not. But if a man have STD, you can kind of guess that because most of them are symptomatic. Though in women, they might have some milder symptoms. Symptoms appear within three weeks. Here, excessive or abnormally milky or yellow discharge you can see. It may associate with cervivitis, urethritis, endometritis, and perihepatitis. In both proctitis and conjunctivitis, we can see chlamydia infection. Vertical transmission can result in conjunctivitis in newborns. Just like the gonorrheal infection, we also see that's a, that's a problem with ophthalmic condition and the discharge start to come out from the eye and the newborn has difficulty to visualize things. Same thing here, if there is a vertical transfer from the parent to the child, from the mother to the child, in that case, will also involve in the conjunctivitis. There is an associated, this is again associated with increased rate of HIV. So the patients with HIV have more chance to get chlamydia compared to the healthy normal patients. The treatment of chlamydia, 95% are cured with antibiotic. Antibiotic involved with azithromycin, doxycycline. Any of this can be prescribed. Though you are in, in kind of chronic situations, you need to take the antibiotic for a long term period but it might relieve you from all the symptoms. Resistance to this antibiotic is still relatively rare. So that's why the other, other line of defense are not uh, that much developed over here. Laboratory diagnosis, we can take sample as urine, vaginal or penile swabs. We can take that and we put that swabs or the urine culture in the different cell culture techniques. We can go into like McCoy or HeLa cells with cyclohexamide, okay, for 48 to 72 hours. And then what we do, then we stain them, okay. We stain them and we try to see what's going on there. The sensitivity is 80 to 90 percent, okay. And if you look at the direct cytology that if we use the fluorescent antibody technique, that is, if we add some antibody, which is added to some sort of fluorescent dye and put in the UV, so you can see that uh, those antibodies developing. As you see here, this is a cell culture where the multiple cells are placed and these tiny dots, as you see, they are giving a green fluorescence. That means they, they carry all those, all those fluorescent antibodies and now they are giving us the idea of what's going on, okay. Cell culture techniques or sampling techniques can work fine uh, like, like others. Whether there are some non-culture techniques as well, enzyme mediated techniques. We use this nucleic acid amplification test. We used to use this test as well for the identification of TB. 
We can also use this NAT, nucleic acid amplification test, where you use the DNA RNA hybridization assay to find out uh, whether the infective agent is present or not, or what kind of infective agent is actually present. You know, most of the time, the symptoms that we visualize at the early time, that is the problem with uh, like the discharge coming out from the genitals and stuff, are related with many different types of STD because the causative agents are different. So once you diagnose with STD, it is very, very important to identify the causative agent of the disease. To find out which agent is causi causing the disease, we need to use different techniques. That's it. We can go for e enzyme immunoassay or EIA. So we use EIA for the detection of LPS layer because you know in this case chlamydia have this LPS layer and the specificity of this assay is more than 70%, uh, 97%, sorry. So you can take that. Okay. Now the fourth type of STD we want to talk about is herpes and this is dangerous. Herpes is caused by herpes simplex virus or HSV. There are two types of herpes simplex virus, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 cause cold sore, but type 2 cause genital infection. They are classed as herpes viruses. They have short replication cycle and normally the capsid consisting of 162 type of cap cap capsomere and with DNA core. Okay? And again, herpes infection is more predominant in female compared with male. Okay? And they establish latency in the sensory ganglia of our body. If you look at clinical features, they appear as extensive lesion around genitals. Discharges are less, but there are visible lesions found near or around genitals. Three to seven days after the infection, they start these symptoms. The healing time can take up to two weeks. It is associated with fever, dysuria, and inguinal lymphadenopathy. So lymphoid adenopathy alongside with fever and dysuria. Congenital spread can result in the infection to the eye, skin, and mucosa of that newborn baby. Okay. Central nervous system and uh, is can be affected because they can affect the ganglia and 70% of the classes seen in asymptomatic mother. Okay? So the mother most of the time in congenital infections are asymptomatic, but the child can get these infections. The treatment for herpes virus, as it is a viral mediated STD, you need to take antivirals like oral acyclovir. Velacyclovar, Famciclovir, these are the three types of antivirals that are normally taken. Okay. Laboratory diagnosis, normally you see the Aciclovir is taken for the systemic complications where this disease is staying for a lot of time and it is spreading throughout the body only. Laboratory diagnosis, for the diagnosis we need to take the swab with the cotton swab. We can take it uh, those those uh, regions from the in inflammation and uh, regions from those characteristic discharges, okay? And then we put it into the culture medium to to grow and see what's going there. We can again grow the cell culture in the human diploid fibroblasts. We look for cytopathic effect. Because HSV has a cytopathic effect. Cytopathic effect means there are multiple ranges of effect will go on, like, like the virus will hijack the host cell, it will start to degrade the host cell DNA. Virus particles start to form and then they'll start to kill the virus and come out. So this kind of effects alongside together known as cytopathic effect. So we want to check this cytopathic effect in the cell culture medium. After plating or after providing that swab associated sample to the tissue culture okay so we do the high viral load if, if there's a high viral load you see the cytopathic effect within 18 to 24 hours if there is low viral load still you can see cytopathic effect but it will take like four to five days to see that 
We can also do some direct examinations under fluorescence level monoclonal antibody in, um, inside the fluorescent microscope. Or we can also go culture less method using ELISA detection kit. There is a specific ELISA kit designed for herpes de detection. We can easily detect herpes using ELISA, the presence of antigens. Now the fifth type of STD that we want to talk about and the causative agent we want to talk about is human papilloma virus or HPV. Human papilloma virus can cause genital warts and some cancer and this is more predominant in male compared with female. 120 dis distinct type of HPV is identified where broadly divided into two new group cutaneous infection and mucosal infection. Okay? Most commonly sexually transmitted viral disease is due to human papilloma virus. Predicted 50% of the sexually active people with this infection within one more HPV infection. The clinical symptoms include it can affect the genitals, anus, mouth and throat. Type 6 and 11, there are multiple types of human papilloma virus different serotypes. Among them type 6 and 11 cause 90% of the genital warts and which are more common. Genital wart appear in the small or group of bump. It can be small or large, it can be raised or flat, it can be cauliflower shaped or it would be smoother. But there would be the genital wart and 90% of the symptoms are with this genital warts. They appear week, weeks to months after the infection. If they are untreated, they may go away, but they remain unchanged or it might increase in size and number. So it will vary from person to person. Rarely transmitted from mother to newborn. So the congenital situation of human papilloma virus is not that much. 40%, approximately 40 sexually transmitted HPV can cause cancer. HPV 16 and 18 are responsible for the majority of HPV mediated cancer. Okay? So HPV is dangerous because it is not only related with the sexually transmitted infections, it is also related to kill you by producing cancer because this virus will make your cells transformed into cancerous cell. Less, but in this case, genital cancers may be caused though it is less or rare but still it might be caused. Treatment for HPV, treatment for the genital warts are the topical agent, we use topical agent as the treatment, okay? we just apply topical agent in those genital warts so that it may uh, be reduced. Otherwise there should be surgeries, cryosurgeries, electrosurgery or laser surgeries can be, can be done to hide them, hide the effect. But if the infection is there, if the human papilloma virus is present there for long run, these warts can be seen again. They can form the warts again in future. Precancerous cervical lesion. Before the cancer mediated by HPV, small part of lesion start to form. And the way to remove this cervical lesion is the cryosurgery okay? or different types of electrological surgery. Diagnosis, we can recognize the words pretty easily by their appearance. Okay? So it is much common so people can and doctors can easily tell you. HPV DNA detection are available but there is no gold standard test for that. But usually people get the idea of HPV by their appearance itself. So this in a sense of different four types of STD infections and their related organism, five types actually we talked about, their related organisms, their clinical features, their treatment and diagnosis that are available. So remember the most important thing about the STD is that it's a life lesson for you because you know if you want to have fun and sex, in that case the problem comes within like human papilloma virus, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, those things comes free. So always you have to keep some certain things in your mind because as you see this unprotected sex is going on and on throughout the last couple of years it is going to hit a 
huge bump. So you need to think about all this stuff very carefully and you should not go for any of this unconventional method or, or unprotected sex methods. Okay, and why these STDs are dangerous because it is not only killing you, it is a disease after which the social conventions are also being changed and also this is a disease which can be transferred from you to your child. So a lot more people are getting infected and you are spreading the disease to others as well. So to be a perfectly fine human being and healthy human being for multiple sex partners use condom. That is the idea in this ultimate, ultimate PowerPoint. Okay, so that's it. I hope you this video helps you. Thank you.